What's up, Mozzie here? Hope you're having a splendid day. So today we will finally do some more modifications to the interior of my 2019 30th anniversary Mazda MX-5. As you may or may not know, that car comes with a lot of Alcantara from factory. So we have the seats in Alcantara, the door cards in Alcantara, and also some parts of the dash is also in Alcantara as well. And since previously I have installed a racing shift knob, so it's a Stratos shift knob with Alcantara and with a custom core orange color, or the core is in custom orange. And we do also have a Mein Lenkrad steering wheel, which is also in Alcantara with orange contrast stitching. And we do also have a uh, rev dial from EL Motorsport, which is also in orange. And I think those three things did a lot with regards to how the interior feels. And I hope with these parts, which we got from ZMX. So I reached out to ZMX and asked if they want to do a collaboration. I have paid for all these parts, but I did get a rebate. And the intention was to show you what ZMX can offer. And also obviously to have my interior to be more coherent. So uh, shout out to ZMX. I will link to these products down below. And obviously uh, if you don't have a, 30th anniversary MX-5, you will not want to have the orange contrast stitching, so they will have Alcantara pieces with the stitching that are there for regular NDs and ND2s then. So have a look for yourself. So what we will be doing today is to install a Alcantara shift boot, as you can see with contrast orange stitching. We do have a boot for the parking brake, also in Alcantara with orange stitching and also maybe something more of a from a comfort perspective so it's a raised armrest uh, also with orange contrast stitching but this is in leather so we will see if we will switch this out to Alcantara as well going forward and uh, as part of the collaboration then I did also buy a set or uh, actually two sets of taillights from ZMX so one as you can see here is in with an orange insert that will go really well I think with the 30th anniversary MX-5 and also we have one with a black set we do also have a spider set that will go on as well so we can compare those three taillight sets and see what they look like so stay tuned for that content and if you did like today's video and found it informational give it a big thumbs up but with that said let's get on with the installation so in order to be able to install the shift boot, the boot for the parking brake and the armrest, we need to disassemble some parts on the car. Don't worry, we will take it easy and we should not break anything. So that is that. But there are two considerations with regards to removing the trim pieces is that we do have a cable uh, on the underside that goes to this unit here, which we need to uh, remove then. And also we do have a hook, which the boot for the parking brake latches onto so that we need to also take into consideration but before that uh, i don't know if you see it it is a line here so in the plastic and that goes around we could say that this whole uh, piece here is one piece but it's actually two pieces so the trim around the shift knob then latches on to this piece here but we will see if we can remove both in one go so these are then held in place with some clips and once we have removed uh, this part here before we do that we need to remove the shift knob which is then turned counterclockwise and it will just come loose and we can remove it once we have removed these two pieces then is that we have two screws one here and one here which we need to remove in order to be able to remove this assembly here to get to two screws that we have holding the armrest in place down here and we do have two on top here as well and therefore we need to remove this whole section more or less in order to be able to do so. So uh, what we will be doing is to remove the shift knob first and then we will try to disassemble this part and then we will tackle the rest. It comes out rather easily. With the shift knob set aside, I will pull the parking brake to make it easier for us when we are removing the other pieces later on. And if we do lift up the armrest, we can access to this portion here and we will try to pull this up. We will see if this uh, trim piece around the shift there will come loose as well. Otherwise, we might have to resort to one of our plastic prying tools then. But we will see how it will come out. So I will start off with pulling the backside here with my fingers. And that came loose. And... I'll see if I can pop this portion out as well. There we go. 
Now, again, then we need to be a little bit careful because we do have a cable running on the underside of uh, this unit here then. There we go. So we have it loose. And then if I pull this up gently, I don't know if you can see, but we do have a white cable here or a connector. The cable on my car, at least the locking is on the front here. So we need to push that tab and gently pull the cable downwards or the connector. It's easier said than done. We'll hopefully get it out without damaging anything. There we go. And then this whole unit comes loose and I will show you what we need to do with regards to removing the shift boot etc and here we do have two phillips screws which we need to remove in order to be able to remove the center console part as well and also as i mentioned then we do have a hook here which we need to consider when removing the boot for the parking brake so what i will start doing is to remove the phillips screws Next is then try to see if we can remove the center console and uh, I might have mentioned it before it's sitting with some clips from uh, the back side here and going forward so I'll try to see if we can remove it from the back here I just move the seat uh, a little bit forward to give me a little bit more room and then as you heard that pops out and we have some clips here in the front and there we go and the next is then to make sure that we don't get stuck on this hook here there we go that's loose and then we should be able to lift this up And remove it from the car and as you can see I can't do it facing forwards we need to turn it a little bit I believe so gentle don't scratch anything and then we have it out as you can see now let's have a closer look on how we can remove the shift boot so if I turn this around and as you can see the rubber part is attaching to the surrounding of the shifter and the part which then we have the knob for the infotainment it also attached to that with some clips then so it's actually three pieces i just said it was two but it's three pieces but in order for us to be able to remove the shift boot we have these two phillips screws here once those are removed we need to consider these two tabs and this should come out in one piece and then i'll show you how to remove the shift boot from this trim here which is uh, keep it in place and then how to attach the new one then like that and this we pull it upwards and let's see is it stuck somewhere here do we need to remove there we go and there we have it loose so having a closer look on the OEM piece, we do have these two tabs here. And then we also have these two sections where the Phillips screws then attach this piece to the rest of the trim pieces. So we need to take that into consideration when installing the new shift boot. As you can see, we have one tab here and one tab here, which is a little bit longer than the one in the middle. And that is for these two then and on the other side of the shift boot it's similar than for these two tabs on top here to remove the oem shift boot we need to carefully remove it from these security tabs i don't know if you can see this this one right here so if i pull this above and then we can remove the shift boot from these two plastic tabs here and then we will work our way around and remove it from the rest of the pins here and that is 
out hopefully or we have one more left here and one more left here so that is that with regards to the OEM shift boot coming out the next step is then to in reverse fashion install the Alcantara piece what I did notice was that the two larger tabs or the four larger tabs are not similar so for these to the holes are a little bit larger on the tabs on the Alcantara boot here so you need to take caution on which side you are using so if I'll try to install this it should go in in this direction and we should be able to pull this over the security locking here or what we want to call it and then we have these smaller locking tabs that needs to be over the Alcantara and this is the end result and we just need to consider the orientation when installing this back so it will go in something like this so we need to consider these two then first so they go in and then when we have everything in place we can reinstall the two Phillips screws then let's see how this looks looks great and then we can install the two Phillips screws then like that and now we have this assembled again next let's have a look at how we can remove the armrest so if you remember I mentioned there are two Phillips screws here which we could access while all of this was on the car but what we cannot access are these two Phillips screws which we have here so those needs to be removed as well in order for us to be able to remove the armrest itself with all four Phillips screws out we can just pull on these tabs here and the armrest should come loose as you can see and as you can see we do have four places down for where the Phillips screws goes and then on the aftermarket one we do have four as well which we will then reuse and let's see if we can pop this in place we have some guide pins i believe if i turn this around it makes it easier i don't know if you see these two guide pins i had to push the armrest into the together with this plastic piece here to get engagement for the screws as this material is a little bit thicker so this plastic trimming around here doesn't sit as indented as it did on the OEM piece I don't know if you can see the difference here but that is something I had to do to get this uh, uh, Phillips screw in there and then we'll have to do the second one to secure it in place so as you can see I'm pushing these two pieces together and now it engaged and we don't need to go too tight because it's plastic and then we will turn this around and do the two Phillips screws on top here and it closes and opens without any issues parking brake is held on with this frame here similar to the shift boot and that is held in place with these two clips as you can see in order for us to remove this frame we need to decompress these red tabs and press it downwards at the same time and they should come out there was the first one the second one was a little bit tricky to get in there with my fingers so i think i'll have to use a set of pliers the parking brake boot is then attached to the frame in similar way as we have for the shift boot so we have these small tabs and there we have the boot loose and then we need to consider the orientation there we have the parking brake boot in place as well it took a little bit more time it was a little bit more tight than uh, we had on the shift boot but that's all right as long as we get all these tabs in place we should be good to go to consider the orientation before installing this so this is where the hook will go which i showed you earlier this should be facing forward so if we lift this up and we should be able to press back these clips where they need to go 
I actually had to rethink my strategy a little bit because these two tabs we have on the boot here, they need to go on this uh, hook, which we talked about earlier, and that was impossible with everything assembled. So I did remove the boot from the trim piece here, and we'll see if we can get it hooked this way first, and then uh, assemble everything back in place. So let's see how this goes. There we got the second one as well, finally. Let's see if we can get this in place as well. <clears throat> like this. Everything is attached. It was a pain in the butt. What I will do now is to push back these tabs we have in the rear and then we'll attach it here as well and then we will go on with the rest. There we have those tabs. Once we have the center piece back in place we can reinstall the two Phillips screws and then we will take the other console piece we removed and attach our cable in the same direction we took it out there we go and then we lift this up and push it back into place that should be it with regards to the trim pieces and the last thing then is to install the shift knob again there we have it very nice this is the way it came out and in my opinion it came out really really well seeing the orange dial the Alcantara steering wheel with the orange stitching, the orange on the shift knob, the Alcantara on the shift knob. And now that we have the boot uh, for the shifter and the parking brake in Alcantara, it re it feels really nice in here, <laughs> almost cozy because it's a more warmer material, so to speak, Alcantara, and it matches the seat and uh, the dash trimming really well. But what is almost the most positive with all of this is the armrest. I could not imagine that it would make such a difference, but from a comfortable aspect, it feels really cushioned and uh, soft compared to the Orion one. It almost makes your elbow hurt. And also, as it is a little bit raised, we do not touch these dials by accident. And also, height-wise, I don't know if this comes through, but in relation to the shifter, it is almost perfect height-wise. I can still have my arm here. I don't need to lift it or have it downwards so not an angle so to speak and it feels really nice so that was a really great addition what i want to do i think is to get this in alcantara as well to have that single last piece tying everything together so uh, let me know in the comment sections what you think of this it was not a complex installation I don't know, maybe give yourself 30-40 minutes, you will be uh, ready with all of it. So if you do have Alcantara on your trim pieces and seats, etc. and have been thinking about it, do it. I'll link it down below so you can have a look for yourself. And also a shout out to Zemex again. And uh, if you did like today's video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, do remember to subscribe for future content. But with that said, I'll be seeing you on the next one.